Welcome to another episode of We're Not Wizards, and it's not just me, is it, Colin? It's it's not just you. There, it's there are Colin. Other people. Colin yeah. is here as well. <laughs> so uh, this is kind of going to be our our sign off show up until Christmas the holidays. Special. Our oh, Christmas, Christmas special, special. Christmas. <laughs> Let me be Christmas and finals for reality TV shows and all that kind of nonsense. So. Um, Yes. Before we go off on our mid-season break. Pretty much. Yeah. For a yeah. couple of days. <laughs> and this episode is going to be called uh, Deck Mahals with Aliens and Technology. Fa la 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 la. Pretty much. Yeah. And uh, we know why it's called that. And you will know why it's called that. <laughs> Hopefully. 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 They're, they're turning off just now, though. They're not. They're, no, I thought that was a quite resonant. I bet you do a really good bass, though, if you saw it. <laughs> <laughs> you should try it again underneath. I've got a da 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 da, but we'll not. Yeah. Um, how you doing? I'm all right. How are you? I'm, I'm cracking today. You're cracking? I'm Dear fantastic. <laughs> I told you to keep off the math. I can't help it. It's, <laughs> it's just, it just reminds me of being involved. It's like being covered in raspberry Mr. Freezes. <laughs> 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 That's how good it is And if you remember what a raspberry Mr. Freeze is My good people You remember it was bright blue And crystalline <laughs> <laughs> Anyway enough of the drug <laughs> For starting off with drug references yes, yes, It's yes, Christmas It's, it's, Christmas. Not, it's, it's Christmas, Christmas time It's not office party time We've taken off our serious hats it's We fine. have taken it's off fine. our serious hats <laughs> We're now sitting afterwards In the morning of regret Wondering mm. why we told that really funny but dodgy joke to our bosses. Yes. But there's only one thing to do while you're contemplating what you have been done, what you have drunk, and exactly what you photocopied and put on the desks of the accountancy people. And that's to maybe sit around and play some board games. Yes. yes. This yes. is We Are Not Wizards. I'm Richard. I'm with Colin. We've done an intro. But in a roundabout way. In a roundabout way. But we're very, very excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, for anyone who's joining us for the first time, the reason that we do this is because there's not enough podcasts about board games. No, I can't find any. Uh, we're continuing to look and the hunt is bringing up nada. Mm -hmm. Nil. Um, I use Ask Jeeves, so it's, it's probably... <laughs> <laughs> I don't, yeah, I know. I've heard there's this other thing, but I'm not sure how it works. I'm not going to trust any website that starts with the letter G either. No. Yahoo? <laughs> <laughs> Yahoo? Um, the other thing is there's simply not enough, um, there's not enough podcasts out there with Richard and Colin. No. no. Not at this time. <laughs> no, not no. at this time of year. Definitely not. Um, so as we normally, as we normally, um, dive into what we've been doing it's uh, it's time for a bit of get to the table mm. now last time and previously on we are not wizards me and colin decided to play two games yes now before we jump into what we've been playing let's stop for a second now we have decided over the period of the last couple of months so that getting two games to the <laughs> table is impossible. Just not, it's just not <laughs> happening um so this is going to be the last time we're going to talk about two games in an attempt to make sure there is more, pretty much more Richard and Colin getting to the podcast mm -hmm. as opposed to getting games to the table. Because the main reason that we've not been recording together is because so, yeah. we've not been playing, we've not been no. having enough time to play the games that we said we've been playing. So from now on, we're just going to deep dive into one, mm -hmm. which we'll be talking about later on. But in the meantime, and just now... The last thing we spoke about, and the reason the title for the show, we spoke about Taj Mahal. Yes, yeah. 
The Taj Mahal is by Rio Grande and it goes for about 20 to 30 quid, but I'm pretty sure you can get it. And you should be able to find it for a tenner if, if you know where to look. Yes. Now, we're not going to openly advertise, but there are places which is opposite if there's a shop that's quite similar to being called The Jobs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. You will uh, find people working there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and when they're doing, they are actually getting involved in doing their works, um, if you want to. And if you can't guess what that is, then goodness help you um do you want to tell the people about taj mahal because i'm aware it's like five minutes and all i've done is <laughs> as usual oh it's months since we played it i i, I can't remember a thing about it <laughs> <laughs> right okay where's the rule book let's just read through the rule book from the beginning to the end like a good christmas story. <laughs> um if you were to be able to cast your mind back in yeah, time yeah. like marty mcfly and mm-hmm. doc brown what are you going to say that Taj Mahal's about, Colin? I'm going to say that it is... It's a subtle bill, a blind bidding yes. mixed with area control game. Yes. All tied up with a kind of a push to winning victory points. Oh, yeah, yeah. In it's a typical to, Rio Grande yeah, game. It's, a, yeah. it's all about the points. It's, yeah, and what do points it's not make? not the base. Nothing. Just you win yeah, if you, you get win the points. You, you yeah. win. There's no microwaves or well, you know. You, you get to say that you you led the yeah. the Indian nation into making the Taj Mahal. So Fantastic. That's, that's, that's all you need in life. So that's the theme. So what is it all about? It's it's about well, it's actually about the the Maharajas and trying to become the most dominant person, so that effectively it would be you who would end up making the Taj Mahal. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so you're like being the merchant. So you, you're being like the the whole sort of faction. And it's played around. Um, we had a, how many? We had four players playing it, or did we have five players I think playing we had it? Five. Yeah, we did yeah. exceptionally well. Hmm. We managed to coerce a number of people yeah. into playing it after it being sitting around for some time. I was like, "Give me a guess. Give me come a, on, come, give on, me, come on, come on, come on, come on." I'm sure they probably <laughs> misheard us. <laughs> Do you want to give my Taj Mahal? What was that? Um, did you say Space Hulk? Yes, we yes. did. Yeah. Yes, we yeah. did. Come on, sit down. Why are there no Space Marines or miniatures? It Why does these look like buildings going? No, 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 you're bidding for different types of factions, as in what yeah, they do. Yeah, you've got a huge amount of choice. Um, it's a case of who wins the first betting round gets first choice of, of something, and then the next winner gets something else, and the next winner gets something else. And the cards are split into um, four different colours. Yes. Uh, with With a white being a sort of and several sort of wild cards that you can use to to garner different effects and if you win one type of of color then you get like the ambassador of that color yeah yeah and you know whoever gets the most points gets to put your piece down on the board first Mm -hmm. which Mm -hmm. is the area control element of the game yeah and that area control thing you're trying to make like trade routes on the map yeah it is it's almost um it's kind of as with all these games like say like power grid and stuff like mm, that and even mm. yeah you're kind of link try to link things together you're trying to make it as big a link as you can because that's more points again at the end of the game a bit like ticket to ride it has that yeah yeah it's kind of got that kind of bind binding everything together and then you've got uh ones that allow you to build little kind of buildings well, on you the play, can, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and with that, it also allows you to have little kind of tokens and, and kind of upgrades. Well, you get there's points the, the, and... the, um, the crown that you could yes. win, and the crown would give you another special effect on on 
where you would place your tokens. You, you would get to place two tokens and uh, two Tash Mahals in yes. that zone as opposed to just being able to place one. Which See, the idea behind it is when you play your cards, it's a case of do you hold back for mm. future games? Yeah, do, do you give up on this set? You know, the board is uh, broken up into 12 different zones. Yes. And so you might decide... I can't link anything good with this zone, so I'm just going to give up on it and wait till we go play the next zone, and I'm going to bet heavy on that next zone. Yeah, so it leads to getting a bit of a strategy. It's not worthwhile just rushing in with what mm. you think you have yeah. a good hand, because there was a lot of occasions that you would go in and say, "Okay, I'm I'm playing the Grand Vizier, mm -hmm. for instance." Yeah. And then somebody would come along and say, well, actually, I've got four of these, so I'm going to trump that, I'm yeah. going to beat you. And then yeah. you've ended up spending a couple of yeah, cards you, just, trying to kinda, down, just trying to kind of win. Down war, um, you know, it was like uh, military. Mm -hmm. um, oh, dear me, I should have looked at the box. <laughs> <laughs> There's the, um, uh, the kind of the royal court, the ambassadors. The royal court, yeah. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And then the workers and then the merchants. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but I guess it's all about uh, getting the region, building your palaces, mm -hmm. linking your palaces together. together. That was the important bit. Of the game. And that was the bit, because I won <laughs> this <Yeah>. one. <laughs> I'd like to say as a first that I came in and we played and I, I won. I was vic victorious. Mm, I didn't win and I still enjoyed the game. <laughs> Which is kind of unusual. I don't know if this is maybe down to kind of like the uh, the kind of the Christmas uh, Christmas spirit, but um, yeah, I mean the uh, you've got as I say, you've got kind of like different supports. So you're basically asking for people to give you support. So you've got like the general, you've got the monk, you've got the princess. Uh, or the Grand Mughal he's, themselves. He's to look the game up, so I have so looked up the game up just to remember it myself. Remembering everything. Well, I'm just slowly. It's, it's not like I've got <laughs> come out of a haze of not remembering anything. <laughs> what I liked about it was, it was a game that was relatively quite easy to play on a turn by turn level. Mm -hmm. But then it went from being very simple to being really, extremely oh yeah it, it, complicated it, very, as soon very as the quickly. sort of rules clicked in you suddenly like i think everyone at the table had that moment of oh yeah. right and <laughs> what was interesting well, there's things that are interesting is you can't just have everybody going for say like the princess and then winning the princess four mm. times once the princess has kind of been claimed in that round Yes, you can't yeah. go on and yeah. claim it again. That's it you've, done for you've that. You've lost all those points that you, you've yeah. betted trying to win the princess. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's gone. Yeah, and it's there's way, I very, mean, there's ways of... It's very stabby, stabby in the back. <laughs> it was, uh... I, I can't, I'm trying. I just, I got very, very lucky with linking mm. kind of multiple places together. It wasn't yeah. until the very end because I was kind of, uh, I was trailing behind... I was trailing behind kind of everybody mm -hmm. else. Then I started yep. catching up. And then at the end, because I'd taken my time and I'd kind of linked all the kind of the buildings together, I think that caused me to kind of romp home mm. with a reasonable kind of amount of, with a reasonable amount of points. Points. Um, but I, let's talk about the, the artwork. Mm -hmm. It's, Kind of typical for a Rio Grande it's type very style. It's Rio very, Grande. very it's kind of recognisable in terms of a watercolour type water style. Watercoloured background, um, not very flashy. But then the wee Taj Mahal models are really well sculpted. You know, it's it's they're really really nice. Yeah, they're absolutely the, you know, the yeah. Cards are all you know really nice sort of Indian. Um, it's like an it's that. Kind of traditional so, kind of art style. Yeah, that that sort of um, what's it, fifteen, fifteen, sixteen century. Yeah. Sort of Islamic influenced, um, backing to the cards, which looks really nice. It's yeah. Like, oh, it's it's like everything looks really nice. It's not flashy though. It's it's not, you know, it's not like putting down, say, a modern fantasy flight game. No. Where you're no. gonna go, ooh, you know. 
it's simplistic, to, but it has to be simplistic because you've got to kind of. There's a lot mm. of kind of information to take in from one point. You are looking at the the only problem we had with the fact that Rio Grande uses so much pastel colors. Yeah, is the one or two guys who are colorblind have yeah some difficulties with some of the the cards because they were like. It was based is, on the is colors, that green or is that brown? Yeah. I think uh, uh, or orange and brown. Is, um... I mean, it was lucky that there was little characters on the cards, mm. but yep. staring straight away, some of the guys were like, oh, "I'll play this," and it's like you can't because that's the actual that's yeah. the kind of the, the kind of the wrong that's the kind of the wrong thing. So looks wise, it's kind of nice. It's what you expect from a Rio Grande game and mm. the other Rio Grande yeah, games totally. that we played. Solid game. In terms of time it took to actually kind of learn. 20 minutes, half an hour to kind of get the basics around everybody before everybody was comfortable mm -hmm. with what they were doing. And then the rest of the game was another hour after that. And as you yeah. said, you could see folk kind of... You know, oh, the kinda, little light bulbs went on. All, all on, over on the everyone. place. It was um, like Christmas had come early on yep. a little Christmas tree. And that was kind of cool. You know, occasionally, you know, you get board game and it doesn't matter how you explain the rules. Mm. There'll be one or two that just, no, no. I don't, I'm not getting it. Um, no happens to me more, more than often yeah well um as with the next game we'll talk about <laughs> yes um <laughs> yes uh but all in all um in terms of the value for it because it is you can get it relatively quite inexpensively quid, um as long as you play it more than once you're gonna get the enjoyment back mm-hmm mm-hmm I think the other thing is, is the other thing is as well is it's as we say it, it's stylish in its own stylish way, mm. but don't let the kind of the maybe the more traditional kind of artwork yeah, certainly put yeah. you off. And also in some the way, the are brilliant. They are fantastic they're like, looking. <laughs> they're absolutely amazing. And also don't let the kind of the theme kind of put you off as well. Yeah, I I do pick games with really odd, boring themes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying a thing. I'm not actually because. When we played Pax Porforiana, that ended up being that was really heavy, interesting and like oh. <laughs> and very very kind of good to play. So we say if you can see it and if you're looking for something that's kind of gets your head kind of a thinking. Again, it's it's a moderate to heavy Euro game. Yeah, um, Euro game. Yeah, that's type where you know it's it's um, how would you describe a Euro game to someone that doesn't know it? Um, there's a lot of the end game result isn't the clear is until you get The is very bolted on on a Euro game. Yes. You know, you're playing a game for the beauty of the mechanics more than the theme of the, yes. of, of the game. Yes. It's, it's not a, nice yeah. mechanics in this game. Yeah, I mean, it's not a... Um, this isn't a case of... This is a, a kind of a um, space marine type thing where you no, can get no, right into no. the story and stuff like that there isn't one it's wrapped around a kind of a mm. this is the story this is what you're meant to be playing for and you could effectively be playing the game with different cards yeah. and different counters with oh, not much could, of a change to it at any all. theme on yeah. it and it would be the same game yeah absolutely but, uh, absolutely and no luck in it that's the important bit no luck no yes. no little Square objects that you roll that that take away your whole enjoyment of life. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we move on to the next game? Then? Yes, yes. Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> yes, I can see this is uh, <laughs> going to be um, kind of interesting. Um, the next game that we're going to talk about is um, is 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 kind of it's all about looking for a segue, and I think I potentially missed one. <laughs> mm -hmm. But moving on from games that. Involve a little bit more luck. Have you ever been on a segue? <laughs> no. 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 no not, not ever. Have I. There's there's one in um, the shopping centre that I go to. You see the security guard rolling around on it now. And you're like, Just what? walk, man. Dear God. You could do with having a walk. <laughs> yeah, he could. He's good, like your centre of gravity is. I know it's kind of getting lower, but that's not the point, mate. <laughs> you do know what I mean. Have a little trot about yourself. Um, the next, it's more you know, a shopping centre can't be more than than what? two thousand metres long. You know, it's At just, the very just most, walk, chap. Come on, even kind of going upstairs. I mean, let's face it. Is there going to be that many shoplifters about that? Oh, that no, like, it's mm. quite a scummy town it's in. So, no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but moving swiftly onwards, I mean, he's probably you know he'd be somebody that would be defending people against shoplifting. 
yeah. somebody that would maybe be defending defending the planet the against the yes. defending the planet against oh. aliens would be if you were a member of the team of galaxy defenders oh Booyah! there we go the circle is complete <laughs> the circle is complete <laughs> now i am the master galaxy defenders um a game by well it was de uh, designed by gremlin projects and it was published by aries Mm -hmm. And it was originally um, a kind of a Kickstarter. It was a starter of the kick. Yep. It was indeed. And it kind of... There's an awful lot to like for a lot of the game. Mm -hmm. And there's also a reasonable amount of kind of frustration yeah. with what Colin was kind of talking about kind of earlier on with regards to potential luck. Well, they I played it in a bad mood, so... You were I, in a I, bad I, mood. I kind of airbrushed myself out of reviewing it because I was yeah. in quite a bad mood when I was playing See, it. See, I played it <laughs> I played it another couple of times and then I also have played it by myself. Billy no mates. Billy by yourself. <laughs> Who are you sending Christmas cards to? Yourself. <laughs> are you looking for single player games? Yes, you are. So you can play them by yourself. That's why I've got son. Have children and a wife, yet you're playing a game by yourself. Well, That's you know. A sad indictment, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know. My, my wife is upstairs leaving me alone, and my, chil <laughs> and my children don't like me, unless we're playing um, Pandemic or something like that. Or they um, need money. <laughs> yes, or something. Yeah, something along those lines. Father, you're the most interesting father we know. How much do you want? 20 should do it. <laughs> it is Christmas time, I know. But you know, we get your presents from Santa. So I don't know what you need all that money for. <laughs> but anyway, Galaxy Defenders is pretty much if... Um, in an unfortunate way, it arrived at a slightly wrong time in terms of... It is XCOM, the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, there's no two ways about it. It's very, very kind of um, focused on being can be deliberately difficult and requiring a reasonable amount of tactics in order for you to play. It's it's if if you know the board game XCOM, yes, or um, it's nothing like the board game XCOM. Hmm. Um, if you've ever played the computer game XCOM, yes. Then that sort of turn based tactical combat that you do is yes. what the game's like. Yes. It is almost like somebody played quite a lot of XCOM, liked it, mm -hmm. and decided to make a board game as close as they could possibly it's, make it. Yeah. Um, and then kind of ran with it. So the idea is essentially you are, you play a group of people. Yep. Um, they've all got kind of How fairly. Is it up to four or was it five? You could play pretty much easily play with five. Yeah. Um, I mean, it would be quite boring though. I would imagine it's um, an awful lot of downtime when it's not your turn. Well, yeah. I mean, we'll get round to why there's kind of things which oh, sorry, which could sorry. be kind of better. <laughs> no, no. I mean, no. You're right. I mean, five. It's one of these games you want it to be short and snappy, mm -hmm. and it's almost yep. the case of in terms of it being a single player game, it really suits mm, yes, the yes, single because... player game kind of mechanics, kind of wise. Of course, yeah. I'm not thinking about it being a solo game, but you know, the the half the game it isn't, tells you what it half does. Half the game isn't so, yeah. you. It is kind yeah. of like like having like an app kind of telling you what to do. So but, we're going off on a huge tangent again. But it doesn't <laughs> matter because, you know, it's fine. Um, but essentially, you have a squad. I mean, this is mm -hmm. you selecting a squad and you'll have players which which are pretty much stereotypical of the kind, kind of the science fiction yeah, marine yep. type trope. So you've got like the, the shark, the big heavy with a machine gun. Yeah, you've the got sniper, you know, get to the, the chopper kind of thing. Yep. You've got your kind of almost like your assassin. You've got your sniper. You've got, you know, and your medic. Yeah, medic. Yeah, and 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 so what you do is the idea is that you get set down on a planet and you get given an objective to do, mm -hmm. and then you carry out this objective and yep. you realize within about five seconds that basically um, complete carnage will ensue or not as the yeah. case may be yeah. um 
the let's start. I mean, let's start on the good stuff or the stuff that I the stuff that I kind of enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Um, the number of things that you can potentially do in a turn are 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 decent. You can do everything from move to snipe to heal to yeah. You can jump through kind well, of was, windows into buildings and stuff like that. So it's a, it's it, it is was, trying it was to a follow. move action and an action. Yeah, you know, and the action and then you know a few other things that you could do instead of your move action and yeah. a whole load of action actions that you could do. Yeah, and you had like your attack yeah. as well. So you could effectively jump through a window if mm-hmm. you wanted to, yeah. or you could hang back and go into almost like a you know you could make sure you're gonna line of sight so you could take anyone out kind of thing um it what it led to, what you found out quite quickly was that the characters themselves there didn't seem to be a kind of a one guy to win it all as even as a single player there wasn't an easy way to pick like a character that you know you would get through the campaign mm. you had to play it with two or three characters even yeah, as a single yeah. player game in order to make the game work because it could become so hilariously imbalanced very very quickly mm. which again goes yeah. back to the XCOM idea you always went out with a squad of at least four yeah. and I would advise people to do the same it's going to take longer for you to play it and get through it and we'll explain why in a minute but it is kind of worthwhile kind of doing it so as I say you've got your t- stereo you've got your typical kind of tropey type characters um, you, everybody usually has two weapons Mm-hmm. They've got their main weapon and they've got like a side weapon that can be everything from um, a medical gun yep. to a sidearm to, you know, multiple, you know, to, yep. to a melee weapon, you mm-hmm. know, and and that will help you define how you how you take on a situation. And then there was the, the third thing of, of the specialist piece of equipment that you could take. With yes. You. Yeah. yeah. So that could you be anything have... from... A, rubber chicken to a hand grenade so <laughs> it was like ammo kind of you know additional yep. ammo that you could take or there was a med kit or there was a smoke grenade or something mm. like that yeah and these were all things that you could take you could take into the field what um what colin's talking about in terms of downtime is the kind of the way that the movements work because um each player would have a each player does their actions and then their moves and then immediately afterwards, yep. you would draw from the alien deck. Now, unusually, um, stepping back a bit, you have a deck of uh, kind of almost like alien artificial intelligence mm-hmm. that decides yep. what is going to be what is going to be happening mm-hmm. within that particular kind of alien thing. So, it could be something simple to say. Um, an alien, or all aliens of a particular color will be activated yeah, yeah. or it'll be um you know bring this alien on board all it will be do this do that and then based on that you have like um you know all green ones will stay still or all green ones will attack or all green ones will do yeah. nothing and then based on that which is where it kind of gets interesting if you then activate an alien then you don't decide where the aliens go. No, it, it it's got a sort of it's an AI almost kind of like a yeah. It's 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 you know like if there's no player within five spaces of the alien, it does this. Yes. If they are, it does this. If they're right beside a player, it does this. It's, yeah. it's got like sort of like a stepped. And it depends on what the actual kind of creature is because mm. the yeah the um. The individual, um, the players themselves, the it's on hexes, and yes, it's yeah, hexes yeah. in um, yeah, is it's, it seven. It's, squ- it's hexes, hexes that and and make up small areas, kind of areas like can I think it's about seven in size. Thinking back, and the aliens oh, yeah. move between little areas, whereas the players have to jump between the individual little squares. So if an alien moves an entire sector... Yeah, so the, the, there's like zones. Yeah, you know. yeah. So That's eight, the word eight, I'm looking eight, eight for. Eight or nine zones, zones yeah. on, on the, the sort of... The, the playing mat that you get. And then and then each of these zones is broken up in with a hex pattern, you know, denoting how big the zone is. 
Yes. So yeah. the alien moves the full zone. So it might say move two zones to the nearest player, and that means it could be right in close combat with you. Yes. Um, but then you can get other ones that say they don't like close combat. They want yes, to. They yeah. want to disappear. They, they, they own. Yeah. And what that means is that you could be in a situation where um, you play, then you flip your alien card mm. and it says activate all green aliens. There could be none on the board because you've yeah, wiped them out. Yeah, in which case you've got a free turn. And that means you know you're kind of you're fine. You're kind of yep. moving on. On the other side of it, the next player could do what they're planning to do. Mm. And then flip the card over, and it could say activate all blue aliens, and or, they could be surrounded by four blue yeah, aliens, and that and, could mean that yeah. every then, then every single one of these aliens then gets a turn, and then mm -hmm. you use the cards, and then that'll determine what everybody yep. kind of does. It is, um, it can be possible <laughs> to um, end up in a situation where if you're not thinking tactically where one of your players can quite easily and quite quickly get wiped out. And mm -hmm. it happened to me in a single player game mm -hmm. where I I had one player who was surrounded by I think it was two blue aliens on either side. The card that was flipped was activate all blue aliens and these guys just got yeah. in and got mm -hmm. some got some decent damage yep. on it. And there wasn't much they could do about mm -hmm. it. Um Healing um, requires you to, if you've got a player near you, if you've got a medic, that's fine. They can go yeah. over and they can use an action and heal. Um, it kind of drove me when I was playing it, and certainly when, when I played it with, uh, I think it was Mr. Leo that I played it with one of the times, mm -hmm. We you very, very quickly learn that spreading out in a group isn't necessarily... The kind of the best idea. Yeah. The best idea. It's not that type of game. Where I know in the game you, we had, yeah, um, you and the other player stayed together. Yes. And my character went off, and yes, he went off stomping. <laughs> as he did. Nah, well, yeah. I, I just ran my character towards all the objectives. Mm. And... Yeah. But... And um, combat is um, combat's kind of dice. Dice. <laughs> And combat's interesting because you're not rolling. It's not a case that, um, and I guess this is down to the alien kind of AI, um, is that if you rolled successfully and you rolled three hits, then the alien defends with three dice. Mm. Yeah. If you roll two hits, they roll one. You know, they roll. You know, again, they roll kind of. Kind of two, well, the, you know, kind of two, two defense the, dice to defend against. If if you roll specials on your attack, then they lose defense dice. Yeah, they and, can. Yeah, they can. Versa. Do. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can also get the wonders of having your if you roll like a um, if you roll like a hazard symbol, you mm. basically get a weapon jam, which yeah. means you can't do anything unless you lose a particular action. D depending on your character, because yeah. you know, obviously the the melee the, person the, the couldn't. Sniper no. had a. Ignore the first jam symbol yeah. that they received yeah. and, and things like. That. Yeah, I think that's why I used in my character. I managed to successfully kind of roll through mm. a couple of jams without having to worry about it. Um, on the other side of it, you also have if bullets appear, then that yep. means that you have a. It sounds strange, but you you kind of have infinite ammo, <laughs> but. And until. you can shoot away until you <laughs> actually roll, yeah. until yeah, <laughs> until you roll a dice that has bullets on it, mm. and then you have a finite unless you've got like a sword or something like that or something that doesn't require ammo, you can end up running out of ammo as well, mm -hmm. which happened to me in the second game that I played, yeah. Yeah. and the only way to get around that was I was lucky I had like an ammo, yeah. an ammo pack, so I was able to. Did you get it? free? further into it because it was just like the sort of welcome to the game mission that I played. Yeah, um, I ended up playing it, um, I ended up spending an evening uh -huh. actually playing through um, quite a few missions and this is where it gets interesting because it then taps back into XCOM in terms of, I know we keep mentioning it but I've played a reasonable amount of oh, it's, XCOM. It's, it's the most obvious comparison. Yeah, I mean you know, it, I mean, it, I mean um, and what happens is that... Maybe, you know, like Space Crusade, if, if anyone ever <laughs> played that many, many years ago. We are going to, I think. I don't... I've got... Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Ooh. And Hero Quest. Mm. So we are. So all those people with their their two hundred pound set of Hero Quests are going to go. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Um, no. Um, uh, we we could we could yeah. I have I have ways and means of getting access to Hero Quest. So I think we mm. should consider doing a retro type Maybe session. Maybe I, I had Space Career say this is uh, oh dear me I must have been. 10 or 11 yes. when I had that yeah I rem- oh. I, I've told oh. this tale a couple oh. of times of ordering it or get or pestering my mother to order it they from had the, a TV advert for from it, which the, had live space marines uh, on it was, and they've oh. never I've never actually ever seen them do that um, but yeah it was twenty four ninety nine in the Littlewoods mm-hmm. catalogue at the time yep. and my mum kind of said I've ordered it I've ordered it and I waited for six weeks and then she said that she hadn't actually ordered it oh. at all and and she did go and order it and it arrived like about seven or eight days later. And this wasn't the days of Amazon Prime where you just ordered something yeah, and it yeah, kind of came. It's, it's yeah. the next Other day. marketplaces are available, I'd just like to point that out. Um, yeah, so that was kind of good. But back to, back anyway, to this. But back to the... Paying, what's interesting is when you get to the end of a campaign, depending on how you've performed mm-hmm. in that campaign... Do you mean battle or do you mean... The series of that of battle, how you've performed in that right. battle, if you've achieved yeah. the ob- achieved the objectives. I mean, the first one's quite simple. It's like there's four, there's three spawning points. Yeah, go switch ahead the spawning points and off. destroy yeah. the destroy the yeah. spawning points. Um, then it's kind of things like you've got to find alien technology, you've got mm-hmm. to defend a point, you've yeah. got you know. So there's the de- and depending on how you perform in the different levels. <laughs> um, <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Depending on how you perform in the different levels, again, you can her her her. No. Okay. Um, that decides what mission you go on to. So it's not just you get to the end of that mission and then you're automatically going to mm-hmm. the next one. Yeah. Depending on how you've done, you'll switch up a couple of pages to maybe a oh, harder okay. one. Oh, you'll switch right. down a couple yep. of pages to, to kind of like a to kind of like an easier one. Um, and can you fail the campaign? You know, like. Like, kind of, there's certain things it, where you, you will fail. You get to the end there's mission, certain or? there's certain missions that will give you that leeway and say, mm-hmm. okay, just play it again. You've got a couple of attempts, yeah. And you get kind of like, um, yeah. What I've not said is at the end of once you have played all the players have played, then you draw an event card, mm-hmm. and what the event card will do is it will say, okay, um, nothing's happening. No more aliens have appeared. Have a restful kind of turn the next turn yeah. or it'll say okay I'll give a number based on the number of players that you'll have you have mm-hmm. to spawn in certain number of aliens yeah. into the area and what's interesting about it is that you roll um, you roll dice mm-hmm. um, you roll dice and basically that tells you where you're meant to be placing the alien itself because each of the spawn points uses one of the symbols from the side of the dice so that's yep, quite clever. Yep. So you roll a dice, and if you get a skull, it means that um, if you get a skull, it means that you place the the alien down on there. Mm-hmm. Now, let's touch quickly on the the models. Oh, the models were good. Dirty, yeah. so, I mean, I can't fault the um, I can't fault the sculpt the the, the sculpts themselves. You know, you, you they're, pick them up. They're it's, decent it's, looking. It's soldier boy. It's 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 solid. It's sniper lady. It's yeah. Um, you it's, know, it's, you know, it's, um, it's pretty much you know everything that you would um, you know it's pretty much everything that you would like to see yeah, um, and there's what was it four or five different types of alien yeah and then you, you've got each of the different classes has you've its, kinda got, its yeah, very own sculpted yeah, model it, yeah I mean they're, they're they're decent they're decent kind of models yeah um, the, the, all the components for the game yeah. are up there in quality yeah, yeah. It's, it's, they suffered from one thing I did discover I did have to do the hot water kind of trick yeah. on mm-hmm. a few of them when they came in um, but then it did say to do that so yeah it kind of worried um, it did say that potentially because of how they've been stored and stuff like that there could, could be it, could some issues so, I mean it's mm. a minor gripe um, yeah. it was kind of it was a minor gripe that could get that was pretty much fixed mm. in kind of like five minutes what's nice is the um the kind of the card stocks are good quality. Mm-hmm. The there's a couple of 
there's a couple of uh, this is where it kind of moves from being something that which could have been easily fantastic and very accessible to being a bit of a pain in the butt. Hmm. The rule book isn't as easy to right. understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was a lot of times where um it there wasn't uh, there was a kind of a crib sheet there. Mm-hmm. But there wasn't something that it wasn't very very easy to find things yep and it's a game that required you to kind of understand very you know quite quickly what i do in this situation what i do in that situation right and yep. to be honest i ended up having to watch and hats off to the guy that did it because there's a guy i can try to remember the boy's name um but he did an entire kind of playthrough of the camp the campaign mm-hmm. himself yeah and he kind of filmed it and it was, you know, that it was easier to go through that with the rules than it was to, in, in some cases, kind of read the, read yeah, the rule book. Yeah, there but there's an awful lot of us out there that you watching someone do it, um, you, you pick up the rules a lot faster than trying to take them out of the book. But mm-hmm. That might just be me, if, yeah. if you know what I mean. Um, just try to find the, um, sorry, just try to find the, the page here, but mm-hmm. yeah, um, so there was that 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 was um, that was a bit of a pain that led to a bit of frustration because <clears throat> I had gone through and I had thought I'd read the rules and thought I understood what was going on, and yet there were still several points I had to refer back to the rule book yeah. because it wasn't it wasn't clear enough that you could comfortably house rule something. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like games. You know, other games that we've played where you've kind of well, do you think it's this? And it's mm-hmm. like you have a vote in it, and it kind of it is pretty obvious that you would do that. Yeah. There's things like the event cards, which it wasn't entirely clear that they were using symbols rather than a little bit of extra kind of text on it, mm-hmm. which would have helped just a little bit. Um, the other thing that um, has to be kind of commented on, the alien cards themselves, mm-hmm. while the, the path, the tree path, was laid out really, really well yeah. for what you're meant to do with mm-hmm. the AI, the for some reason and i don't know why they decided to only to only show a picture of the head of the alien that was coming on or the top i think it was like the top kind of maybe quarter of the alien yeah. that was coming on which meant that when you were playing aliens sometimes it was difficult to actually tell who you should be playing and i do oh. remember that you know very early into the the game that um, <clears throat> me and Mr. Leo and I think Gordon played, right, uh-huh. we realised that we had been placing the wrong alien, the down. wrong alien down, and it was, should have been a guy that had kind of like uh, cl- not claws, but yep. basically knuckle dusters on as opposed to having guns. It didn't make much of a massive effect to the game. Well, I mean, you're up but it was just shooty aliens. Yeah, but I mean, you were still aliens. kind of punchy aliens, but you know. Yep. It wasn't in hundred percent clear what aliens it should be mm-hmm. could you could be playing. Um Is that minor or major gripe, do you think? I think it's something that probably should have been picked up in playtesting to say, mm. you know, how because they were quite good in saying, Well, this is a Xeno this is a Xeno Alpha, this is a Xeno Beta and that text was nice and clear, but the yep. picture of it was I swear was about maybe a centimetre yeah. in size. And what I would have liked to have had was I don't think it would have killed them to have a fuller picture of the alien uh-huh. model so you could see exactly what you were up against rather than maybe a, not maybe an illustrated one, but mm-hmm. it's maybe a bit clearer. It led to a bit of confusion. It led to us kind of swapping, yeah, swapping totally. stuff around. The, the main, I don't know, the main thing that kind of made me kind of love it and not hate it, but love it and be disappointed with it in <laughs> equal measure. I'm not angry. I'm just slightly disappointed. Oh, yeah. Was much like my father. <laughs> <laughs> you know my father. He was a <laughs> lovely man, <laughs> silent and deadly. <laughs> <laughs> was he a fart? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, good off. No, the the thing that kind of maybe disappointed me a bit, in all honesty, was the AI deck. Because it could effectively um, make an objection, make an objective really, really easy to get. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Um, or make it ridiculously difficult within like the first couple of turns, and you could Would be kind of overrun. Liked it if maybe they, maybe you know, like an online update or you know, like something on Board Game Geek <sighs> where it's like set. Yeah. You know, like turn two, this card. Turn three, this card. Turn four, think, this card, or something like I that. I don't know. You know so I think I've or... heard there's. Um, I mean, I've been listening recently to the Mansions of Madness, um, version. The latest kind of version that's come out has an app, mm-hmm. which pretty much kind of has been seen to be, um, makes the game magical almost. Because of how it mm-hmm. handles kind of like the AI ah, and stuff right. like so that. So it takes takes all that out. It takes um, kind of that out yeah. of the equation and obviously allows you. Another to... game that does that. I can't remember <clears> what it is. X. I mean, XCOM obviously does it as well. Um, uh, well, XCOM slightly different. Of the tablet is pretty much. The, you know, it doesn't come with instructions. The, the application you know, is is the sort of game. If if you know what I mean. Yeah. I mean, each of the the players are broken down into like their own sort of mini game of of managing resources. Uh, it, you know, if you're the hmm. you know the commander, mm-hmm. um, you know, like the field operative does the actual fighting with with the ground troops and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, um, in this case, as I say, if you had the event deck, I mean, don't get me wrong, the decks themselves are are. Uh, um, are split into sections so you'll have an entire mm-hmm. deck of like say 15 yeah. cards and it'll say okay split off the first eight and they'll have these cards it'll tell you specifically what ah, cards to have yeah. and then shuffle them in mm. and then split the next deck and kind of shuffle them in yeah. but it is possible to get to be in a situation where you're just like i cannot possibly even think about being able to win this it's, it's mm. just not mm. going to happen yeah. which can be frustrating but on the other time you can have such a clear run well, you don't you know but I suppose you, it's the type of game where you don't want it being too easy all the time you no of course win not every time no you want a cha- you want a challenge but there was but the randomness takes away from the yeah, challenge I a think bit. it's not I think when you've got two random factors yeah. in a game, uh-huh. when you've got the random kind of the cards, and then when you've also got the random factor of the dice, which Colin is, <laughs> as you can, if you look on the webcam right now, Colin is slowly <laughs> transforming into some kind of beast um, when the mention of dice is, is kind of uh, is there. But no, uh, in all seriousness, you can have you can have a bad luck game in this game. Yeah. Which means you can quite simply, in a very very quick space, kind of um, activate blue, activate activate blue aliens. Okay, right. Okay, have to fight them off with your cat. You have to fight them off with one character. The next card is activate all aliens. Then you mm, have to, f- yeah. you know, and you're not getting a chance to fight back. If you then roll rubbishly on the dice, if you have a mm, really really yeah. bad time in the dice. And there is a chance that you can you can effectively roll one hit, mm-hmm. and then obviously you're you know that's just a case of okay they, you're playing against the odds then if you order yeah. if you roll four hits you've got a better chance of getting through or maybe you've not because of the mm-hmm. way that the, the dice are you could just get unlucky, so there was kind of going into something there was a feeling that I the bet I you had to really hone your strategy just going in with a worst case scenario all the time mm-hmm. um, it looks nice I mean yeah. they've got a fantastic little upgrade system as well so as you go through you can you can gain you basically gain kind of tokens that you have the ability to cash in mm-hmm. in order to upgrade yeah. your characters with better weapons and stuff like that mm-hmm. um, it's it's good um it's not it's good and it's good fun but it's unfortunately it's one of these games where if you had a couple of bad if you you may play yeah well it could be the case that you could sit and you could have a a four-hour session with a group of your friends and have the best time yeah and just be kicking ass Mm -hmm. or you could have an hour and a half session and walk away thinking this is too luck based for me mm-hmm. that yeah. I'm really, really mm-hmm. not going to enjoy it. Yeah. Especially if you get like an event, you know, you get an event card that could draw up 
anything at all. Mm-hmm. It could be just drawing up aliens at exactly the wrong time yeah. when you don't need yeah. them. So um, <clears throat> I'll play it again. Yeah. But I'll not rush in to maybe play it again, if mm-hmm. you know what I mean. I'll yeah. definitely want to play it because I want to experience it. And I think it will suit a certain type of player down to mm-hmm. the ground. Yeah. But I think if you've got an aversion to your destiny being controlled completely by luck, you might want to Isn't maybe look every at... every man's fate to... <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, I so old to you. Had I not taken the left path instead of the right, I would be in the king of Egypt <laughs> and covered in silk. Potentially. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's that. Galaxy Defenders. It's expensive as well because it's a Kickstarter. So, um, did it uh, did it get a retail release, or is it just buy it through them? It's just or, a buy. It. I th- I've not seen it about. It's on. I've seen it uh-huh. when I looked around. It's on. You can get it online for about um, fifty fifties. Well, I saw it seventy quid. Seventy quid. Ouch. Yeah. So that again is that's a lot of uh, that's a lot of money to play for a game that you might not necessarily fall in love with Hmm. you know it's a bit of a you know it's a bit it's a bit of a gamble essentially (laughs) um sorry my mic stand is just yeah no it's just like slowly it's 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 like (laughs) didn't realize i was talking so much i said the mic stand to sleep it was fantastic um yeah i just think it might fall fall to xcom i think it probably has i think people have you know who have got xcom have went yeah this is amazing Uh, i think it's more xcom-y than xcom is because the xcom became Here's five mini games. All right, okay. It's it's basically you know each player sits down and plays a mini game. All right, okay. Of you know whatever role it is they're doing. Okay. And not terribly XCOMy. That's a bit of a shame. You I mean you're completely airbrushed out the tactical combat of of XCOM with uh, the XCOM board game. Uh, it's all about the sort of strategic uh, command. If you know. Oh, well, that's know. just a bit. No, I'm not sure about. Hmm. That's a shame. It's, 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 you it's do an alright game. It's it's a bit too pricey for for me. But yeah. Um, and then There's you've the got app. to have the the tablet. You've got to have the fancy phone that can run the app. Yeah, you know? I suppose so. That's a bit. Yeah. Um, okay. So Galaxy Defenders about seventy odd quid. I've seen it for. Mm-hmm. Um, there's lots of expansions for it already. Um, they did yeah. another Kickstarter campaign, and there's a whole pile of expansions where you get to go to the alien planet and Ooh. fight on there instead. So it's kind of, you know, it could be seen as being quite, uh, quite interesting. It's but, an uh, ugly planet. It's <laughs> a bug planet. <laughs> oh dear! I just need to know one thing: where they are. <laughs> Said this a woman's voice. So that's um, that's get. We got these to the table. We've played it's a parade. Yeah. <laughs> if it bleeds, we can kill it. Um, what we did mention earlier on, moving swiftly onwards from mm-hmm. alien, from getting off, getting them off planet Earth to getting things off the shelf, is that um, a couple of weeks ago we asked you, yes, you sitting listening to this now, what you think we should be playing. And I don't know if it's because there's love in the air tonight or something like that for this particular game, but... Well, love the air again. No, no. People came (laughs) back and they said, do you know what? I'd like to see what you guys think about with Scythe. Scythe? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, we haven't spoken an awful lot about Scythe except for we would like to play it. Yeah, Um, yeah, why not? And we have it. So we have it. We've we have it. We've it. looked upon it. How we've played it, and we're gonna talk all about it mm-hmm. on an early episode next. Probably the first episode that we do of twenty seventeen uh, is gonna be yes, maybe yes. Just lots of time between here and New Year. Yeah, yeah. No, know. no. We might do. Yeah, we might be able to get that. Yeah, that's what, so. That's what we're looking at. Other games we're considering. Just in case you're listening to this and you fancy suggesting some stuff. We have access to others, Seven Sins, which is our, which is here. Mm-hmm. We got Escape from Coldit's Castle, which Ooh. I spoke to the lovely Duncan Beloy quite recently mm-hmm. about that. He was fantastic. Um, Star Wars Destiny, the new dice game, 
that our good friend, <laughs> our good friend Mr. Andy, was talking about. Uh huh. I that think is, I might have seen a Facebook picture. Yes, of that a is, thousand packs. Yes, that is, yes. He bought all of the packs and cleared out the shop. I think he probably bought one of those gravity jobs. And probably, probably for about eighty quid, and just went, "I'll have all of those, my good man, and don't spare the horses." So yeah, so that was kind of that was kind of quite cool. So that's Many what we're going to be talking about. Died that day. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Rebel stole the secret plans. But that's not, that's Jedi we're talking about, so it's the second Death Star, not the first one, which is the Rebel Spies one. Oh, it wasn't Bothams that died for that one then. Bothams died in for Jedi, but Bothams didn't die for Rogue One, which is why folk, I've heard some people go, so who's the Bothams then? It's like, well, they're about, they're another kind of film away. Oh my goodness. It's alright, it's alright, I'll... I'll... We're just going. No, 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 just, no, 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 put it down, put it down, put it down, because we're trying to. There you go. There we go. There, there we you go. go. Um, that's. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need a new mic stand. <laughs> it's just kind of slipping down very, very slowly, which is fine because we're kind of slowly getting closer and closer to the kind of the table, which is yes. nice. Um, one thing we like to talk about is, um, well, we told you what we're going to do. We're now going to look at. What can you potentially give a give it a kick to? So give it a kick is the next section of the show. Where I, it's coming up for Christmas, so I've not looked at Kickstarter because I don't want to spend any money. I have kind of been <laughs> floating around of it because what it's been doing, as you maybe know, is I've been speaking to a few people who have been doing Kickstarter. The mm -hmm. um, latest one was Mark Pearson who did the football game. So we had a chat. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know we've been talking about this, but we've also I've been talking to people what happens afterwards once you get the money to find out on the Kickstarter campaign? Well, you, you put it into the Swiss bank account <laughs> and you change your name. <laughs> He's still a bit um, thingy about that. Three, oh, no, it's not 3D printers anymore, isn't it? No. It's something else. <laughs> we're not going to say anything, okay? Just in the case that we're potentially going to ask them to come on and they might be coming on. Oh, that would be nice. That would be nice. Let's have this type of conversation here and now, shall we? Mm. Um, but yes, Colin is now fall full <laughs> to not having another Kickstarter arriving. Yeah. So he's a bit annoyed about this. Yeah. But we're not going to talk about it here. No. No, we're not. <laughs> but we are going to talk about a couple of Kickstarters that have kind of caught our attention and uh, interest. Well, the first one is just a reminder. Um, we had this just lovely gentleman Kevin Young on the show um, last month who was running Legends Untold now little did we know at that time that Legends Untold would not only break through its £12,000 kind of target mm -hmm. but as it's currently sitting now let's get a live update for all you sports fans out there uh, I am just checking. Where's my kid? Ah, there you go, you lovely, lovely man. I don't think that's Kickstarter you're looking at. Let's don't talk about this. This is my own <laughs> private stuff. And at currently sitting at almost two and a half thousand backers. Oh. My giddy aunt is 93,872 pounds. It is Legends Untold. Oh, I saw now, that on the front page. That, yeah. That, that got, yeah. Yeah, Kevin yeah. came on and we talked as he keeps on saying, we talk 20% game and 80% mm. absolute nonsense. If you haven't checked it out, I mean, it's ridiculous because it's he's asking like something about 20 quid a copy. So it's mm. not like he's, you know, it, yeah. this isn't a kind of a, I'd, I'd hate to think what happened if he was offering kind of 100, 100 pound Kickstarters. Oh, it'd be absolutely, well, it'd be, te, it'd be almost like a million pounds. So well done to him. I mean, he's the campaign's obviously been fantastic, but mm. there is a couple of days left, so we just thought we'd give it a little bit of a final boost just because. And uh, why not? You know? And uh, Kevin, Kevin is going to come back on again, I think. We're going to have a little catch-up just mm -hmm. to see how it went because we didn't know what was going to happen at the time. No. And we said, if you fund... And I said this on the latest episode that's gone out. If you fund Kevin, will you come back on the show? <laughs> and he said yes. And as I said, we didn't realise it was going to be within eight hours of him releasing the project. <laughs> so he kind of phoned me up and says, can I come back on now? It's like, no, we have to leave it. You have to leave it. It's at least four weeks until you have another kick, you know, until you have another mm -hmm. come on the show. So he is going to be coming back on. Um, 
interesting. Like, well, one of the other because um, we do like to mention our good old UK guys. Because let's face it, nobody can afford kind of American Kickstarters now, now with the uh, exchange rate, a hundred dollars being about ninety quid now or something like that. So it's, mm, that. it's, um, it's got a wee bit extreme. Yes, it has, but that's not meaning to say that we are not going to mention. Um, we're not going to mention some of our friends um, that are running some campaign. Well, people that have uh, said, "Oh, could you have a have a quick mention of this?" So. Um, we had a chat by the name of Chris Shepperson who said, listen guys, um, my project has just funded, but it's hmm. still open to, um, it's still open to backers. And the game mm -hmm. is called Package. Package. And it's an abstract tabletop game that goes for about a tenner. Um, and the idea behind it, I'm just going to go, it's... It designed with very quick playthrough, um, and it's you don't you have to play it with a board or a great deal of space. You're responsible for depositing a number of packages to five different locations, as well as moving packages about between those locations. Um, the decision behind what's in the packages and what each player represents is left to you. Maybe your couriers taking parcels to businesses, or spies leaving bombs in any facilities enemy facilities or your fishermen bringing the day's catches into harbour um, but the idea is basically you get some pawns you get some wooden packages some locations some dice and the idea I'm guessing the idea is to um, go ahead and use your imagination um, it's a tenor I mean it's it's funded it funded ridiculously well it funded by seven times its actual goal Mm. So it's had a lot of um, it's had certainly had a lot of um, a lot of interest in it anyway. Um, so we did say to Chris we would give it a quick a quick nudge and a quick shout out just to say if you did miss out on the campaign, you've still got the um, you've still got the ability to go ahead and order it through the through the page. So it mm. looks like it is. Ooh, we've just seen the wooden box. <laughs> <laughs> That does look quite nice, and it folds quite well as well. Okay, so it is dice based. You roll a dice, you take an action based on the result. You've got different options, um, moving and removing packages, relocating their player pawn to try and obtain advantage positioning for scoring, and points are scored for each package left in play at the end of the game based on its location, along with other chances to score bonus points. When the game ends, the one with the most points is declared the winner. So it's simple. teaching people how to do drug deals. Eh, uh, maybe. Yeah. Yes. I didn't realise that. going to have to re-up now. I'm going to have to um, edit this out. <laughs> <laughs> <If he's, laughs> says, says he who started the, started the entire podcast talking about <laughs> the similarities between Raspberry... Raspberry Mr. Freeze and Crystal Meth. Delicious, delicious meth. Yes. Del delicious blue. <laughs> How it makes my eyes sparkle. Be um, careful, children. It is Moorish. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Let's say uh, Right. <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say to that. You let him back on. <laughs> and it's been far too long and you realise the reason you want him back in your world again because he's absolutely just fantastic The um, so that is um, package which we will put links in the show for everybody to have a look at and it looks quite fun and it's a tenor mm. it's a Chinese meal basically for one oh, God. <laughs> for one <laughs> with prawn crackers <laughs> and chips well, no, you'd have to buy the prawn crackers because you you're even, not over the fifteen pound know, mark, are you? You wouldn't even get a drink with that. It's absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> the next game that we're going to talk about is three, three games. Ooh. Well, we mentioned Kevin, yep. and we've mentioned yep. Chris. Yeah, we have we have mm -hmm. to mention um, this next game by Spartan Games, mm -hmm. which is dystopian. It's a dystopian world expansion. Um, and it's got nine days to go. It's funded. It's currently sitting at uh, 77,000. Well, if it's a Spartan Kickstarter, it will be funded. <laughs> yes, because they do um, they do exceptionally well. They do um, quite a range of um, range of different games. You've got Dystopian yes, yeah. Wars. They do um, Halo. Yeah, H Halo Fleet Battles. Yep. Yes, so they're involved um, in that. Um, got Uncharted Seas. Um 
and then quite a few things in the dystopian universe. You know, so there's a miniature um, sort of skirmish battle game, and then there's like uh, sort of if you remember Epic, which is like little tiny troops. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, like there, over there. Like they're over quite there. they're yes, quite yeah. tiny, they're tiny little troops over there. For those who aren't aware, dystopian wars is I'm reading this from the text is the ultimate mass battle war game which uses mm. highly detailed one in twelve hundred scale miniatures to bring a Victoria era world to life. And it's it's all about machines that are funded by a mysterious element called Element Two Seventy and battling for supremacy. So the idea behind this is to basically provide some additional expansions mm -hmm. to the well, main... What, what is the expansion? It's a war game. It's not It's not a board game. No, so. it's not. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's uh, It's not even... Would you call us? It's not skirmishy, is it? It's a no, it's, it's game, mass yeah. battle. Mass battle war, yeah. War yeah, game, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay, okay. Um, so the expansion, you've got the Operation Ice Maiden, two-player starter set. Two of the dystopian world's most powerful nations come together in a new two-player set as they battle for the control of the Baltic Sea. Ooh. Naval forces of the Prussian Empire are steaming for the fabled city of Konigsberg, Konigsberg to relieve it from enemy attacks. But facing them is a Russian coalition, Ooh. fleet full of new war machines led by the massive Murmansk fleet operations vessel. The Prussians... However, this should, this should be scrolling, I feel like, in a Star Wars type style at the beginning. It could be. It, it could be. be. Have their own array of new ships and their secret weapon, the Ice Maiden, the largest ship to be ever built in this dystopian world that just happens to be made from an iceberg. Mm -hmm. Both behemoths of the sea are represented as fully sized digital painted card sleeves which feature within the campaign scenarios. So you get your two player starter set. You get... Um, Oh, you get quite a lot of different stuff. You get a nice, you get some decent looking miniatures here. And the good thing from what I've seen um, the Spartan do is their sculpts on the miniatures are usually very, very well done. They're, de you know, so um, very, very interesting. Mm. So um, you've got different rewards. I think the rewards are kind of like a usual fair um for a kind of a semi kind of miniatures game you've got kind yeah. of you know you get the rules themselves and then you get um your main kind of player box is about 65 pounds for the two player box set um and that's going to get you that you get um okay you get free you get free start stretch goals as well which is kind of interesting yeah if, if you do go for it because it's a war game you um what you get in the starter set you will want to add to um yes but obviously think, that yeah. depends on you and your friends if you get into the game then you might want to buy lots if not yeah it's another one of these things mm -hmm. where you really should be checking um you should really should be checking with your friends if they're interested yeah. in playing um it's you know um yes i mean it's definitely kind of worthwhile kind of uh having a check with them just to see if that would be something that we'd mm -hmm. be interested yeah. in um as a quick aside for anyone who is interested in spartan games themselves mm -hmm. we will be having neil on from Ooh. spartan games mm -hmm. over the next couple of weeks excellent so he's going to come on and he's going to chat about the he's going to chat about the company mm -hmm. and we're going to find out a lot more about what he does so that should yeah, be quite yeah. quite interesting as well. They've um, built some quite nice um, worlds that they base the war games in. Yes, um, it's yeah, it's all about the kind of the the world building as well, which is very very interesting. Um, Shadow mages for the win. <laughs> <laughs> and going forward, things that you maybe want to check out in the next couple of weeks, we have had. Um, We've had some guests which will be coming on which have not been released. One of them is uh, Peter Blenkern from Inside the Box Board Games. Mm -hmm. So he has spoken to us and we're just trying to decide when to put his episode out. And he is running a board games company. So he's talking about, again, maybe the ins and outs of Kickstarter and everything yeah. like that. So that would be a good episode. It's nice one. to see, you know, okay, you, you've you've won your kickstarter yes 
But uh, now what happens? Yes, yeah, so what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing with the, what are you doing with all the lovely money? The other thing is as well is um, because we we have nothing but sugar to speak about Elsa games and catacombs. Mm. We I had the the actual honour of speaking to Aaron West from Elsa Games, mm-hmm. and uh, he's going to be coming on the show. And we're going to be releasing the show um, again over the next couple of weeks on the run-up. Because it's nothing but Christmas joy for you people. We couldn't leave you alone over the holidays. Let's face it, as soon as it hits Boxing Day, if you're going to be stuck with your family and you're not going to be able to play board games... don't listen to the Queen's speech. No. Just put the podcast Because that lasts for half an hour. You're you're talking about stuff that what you can do is you can be sitting there and saying, The Great Escape is two and a half hours long. I could listen to two episodes of We Are Not Wizards in that time. Exactly. Just mute... And mute, learn mute something. The TV, put, you know, put, put on the podcast. You know, Steve McQueen is going to crash into those barbed wire. <laughs> you know that Donald Pleasance is not going to be able to see that thing. You know that those two other guys are going to get caught where he says, "Good luck." <laughs> Th- thank you, <laughs> thank you, my good man. So oh, yes, so you these, see that pin over there. I, I can see it. <laughs> I, I can see it. I can see it just fine. Um, so yes, I mean, lots of things happening. As I say, me and Colin are looking to be recording a lot regularly by stripping us down to one every game. day, every week, <laughs> every every at, month, after every sc- month, af- every month at the very <laughs> very least. Um, and we've got lots of new stuff coming up. Um, we usually do a shout out section, and what happened was when I was writing out the show notes for tonight, I thought. We've been going almost, well, it'll be a year in February, mm-hmm. but this has potentially, it's been, I don't know about you, but I've had a lot of fun so far, and I hope you've had, don't look at me like that. Yeah, <laughs> like it's been had, all right. It's yeah. been fine. <laughs> it's been all right. When you've had me on, you know, when you've not been gallivanting with your other friends. Friends of the show. Friends yeah. of the show, yeah. <laughs> we really like that. Um, but. If I drew up a list and I thought I want to thank a lot of people and then I realised if I went through it, it would require a podcast to kind of thank everybody that yep. has provided us with support over the, over the years. Um, it's just like the Oscars. It's kind of like that, you know. It's brilliant. But um, there's a group of guys that we would like to thank just this time, just because it's coming up to Christmas and that. And these are the guys that do see, you know, me and Colin on a regular basis. And they're the guys that you... poor fools. (sighs) Run, you fools. These are the guys... Fly, you fools, fly. (laughs) These are the guys that do end up sitting with us around the table and we subject them to all these games. These are the guys... Here's another new game. Here's another new news rule set that you have to learn. You have to enjoy this game. <laughs> Be open and honest, but you have to enjoy it. I'm just smiles, saying. chaps. Smiles. Yes, we know it's a Euro. We know it's America, America trash. <laughs> we know it's a card game, but we want you to enjoy it. So, dwarf. You know, Dunfermline, War, Hammer, and Roll. No, is it War? No, it's War Gaming. Game. Yeah, Dunfermline War Gaming and uh, Role Playing Fellowship. Um, I was just testing you. <laughs> not editing this out I'm a committee member, I've got to know this thing <laughs> well, you, well you should have bloody then said it, shouldn't you, for goodness sake um, just a shout out to the couple of the guys that we do, that we put through pain, mm. <laughs> you know mm. so, um, John Stu big Stu, we love Stu Liam, who's always, Liam who recently beat you at Pixel Tactics he, and, he, he did, did take away my, my... By cockiness of I've never lost this game. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, um, no, no, no. The Evro on my birthday. <laughs> Beat me on my birthday. Well, you we know, still give him a shout out there. Well, there you go. <laughs> we like you, Liam, for doing that. The ever, um, the ever wonderful Cameron who puts up with just my me just walking past him and looking at him and him saying, "What have I done?" Yeah. <laughs> kind of like, yeah. He's he's a lovely chap, and I have a lot of time Good for him. Chap. Um, Andy. Andy. My card playing buddy mm-hmm. who has put me into the world of Dice Masters and played Ashes with us. Yep. And anything else that's card related, Netrunner, anything along those lines, but we don't talk about Netrunner. Um no. Scott. Scott. Scott's a good lad. Mr. Eric. Eric Lanscale. Um he's a he just surprised me and says, I listen to your show. I, was <laughs> no, like, I, was like, oh, oh. I didn't 
I wanted to hug you. Um, but thanks for, you know, again. I got all bright red and. Oh, it's I know, warm I can. It's like, it's, it's getting warm in here again. Do I have to take my top off? And everyone went, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, Gordon, my good old uh, buddy when it comes to anything kind of X Wing and Armada and, mm-hmm. and, and Vault Wars. And he's he's always a guy that just steps up to the plate when a game's even played. He's, he's happy a to champ- join in. He's a champion man. Uh, Greg and John, they're not a couple. <laughs> But they were on an episode when we were talking about Winter War. Um, you know, a um, couple of fine chaps. Um, and other John, because we can't. We can't, yeah. He's just fantastic. Uh, Dave. 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 Dave and in the turn. Dave and his <laughs> massive collection of board games. That Dave. You go, <gasps> <gasps> you've got that. <laughs> And he has got everything. Um, Kieran, as well. Kieran and his ability to learn rules that make him win. <laughs> mm. And his uh, an amazing ability to pick the exact same route to win that I will. <laughs> <laughs> um, and last but not means least, um, well, he's not a least. Is Mister Leo? Yes. Who just deserves all good things to him? He's been mm. nothing but supportive. He's the reason that we see the little logo on the site. He, he is He's our responsible illustrator. for that. He is fantastic. So those are the shout outs to everybody that you don't know, but we do. And we like them very, very much. Yes. And we wish them a fantastic Christmas. And we hope that their entire world is full of cardboard. Um, questions. Ooh. Because I put the shout out for questions. And as normal, they wanted to ask Twitter us Twitter said no. Twitter said talents. <laughs> so we're just going to go down some of these questions and see what was said. And it's quite a few. It's actually grown since I first looked at <laughs> Um and the question was so Colin and Richard are recording tonight, so does anyone have any questions for the show? Hashtag questions. Hashtag podcast Oof. and we weren't disappointed Did we, ooh. we weren't should we start at the bottom we had mr sam turner um mr sam turner who was on oh well he's lovely mm-hmm. um have you ever thought about using your expert experience and expertise to design a game yourselves no <laughs> <laughs> i i've kind of toyed with it have you? I have kind of. To- I toyed with a kids' game, Ooh. and I have a name. Peter Pan. No. <laughs> <laughs> you can't drop that in. Start off my own. Yeah, let's not. <laughs> let's not go there. Um, no, it's a game. I've got a name for it, mm-hmm. and um, I have an idea, and Do I you have want the to say rules that and so everything like that. And... You can't. No, you can't. Um, <laughs> it's actually. I've still got the plans in here as he goes through Foley and searches it it's all written down so yes i have it's a kids game because i didn't think because i looked at big adult games and i went mm-hmm. i can't write rule books like that no. that's going to be absolutely no. No. ridiculous and then i liked things like uh mice and mystics as well so i like that kind of thing um so thank you mr sam turner thank you sam um he's fab- no, good he's, question he's fabulous nick lane at it lane at 360 was his first question do you think no. It's yes. Yeah. Oh. Yes. No. Yes. We actually cleared it up how he pronounces it. He says yes. Americans and the American is <laughs> he's asking, is Colin become a wizard? He says he's been away so long I think we need to check his credentials. The answer is that we stopped Colin coming on the show so you could <laughs> come on instead. Exactly. All right. So don't be giving us any of your nonsense. Always two there are. (laughs) (laughs) A master and an apprentice. Um, I think, Nick, you'll find you're wrong about a great many things. Um, What's your game? Friends can't help (laughs) Help you you here. (laughs) Your fleet is lost. Uh, He says, the other thing he asks, he asks all the questions, is what is your gaming guilty pleasure? Now, we had a chat about this, mm. and it was kind of like confessing that you liked certain 80s Stock Aikman and Waterman kind of records. Um, I said that on occasion, I have been known to like a bit of Trivial Pursuit. 
Hmm. And Colin said... Monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> we might not be wizards, but we're potentially disappointments. <laughs> um, his next question is, what game is out there that you don't have that you really, really want? Um, there's a couple for me. Mm -hmm. but do you have anything that you would really like that you don't have at you? Ooh. I know. See, I normally just get you to buy them. Um. I know. <laughs> but I'm trying to find it more and more difficult to operate with a one cornea and one kidney. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know? I, I did really want Dune, which I was going to make up my own board and everything because it's out of print. Yeah. Um, I did want that, and then you got a game called Rex, which is June. basically June yeah, yeah. reformatted, and now I don't want June. Is that after you played Rex? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that was an interesting way of gaming. <laughs> Just put the piece down! No, it means that I lose! Yeah, I know, but, you know, I'm not staying here until 11, going on 1 in the morning just because you don't want to put a piece down. Yes, that, that, I, you know. That yeah. really needed more alcohol. But, and and potentially some thumb screws as well. Um, no kinder in the house. <laughs> I know. What for me? What game is out there you don't have that you kind of really want? Um, I'm just trying to think. At the moment, there's a game called This War Is Mine. Ah, yes. That I have yeah. heard a lot of good things about, and I've been discussing it with um, with who was it? Was it Andy? Andy Lewis from Polyhedron Collider. We had a chat about this war as mine. Um, and I thought that would be a good game to get hold of. Mm. Um, yes, so that would be... I think that would be something that I would like to get my hands on. Just because the subject matter sounds really, really, really interesting. Um, then we have friend of the show, Paddy Stardust. Patrick Smith says... Right, lads, as it's Christmas, do you have any games that come out every festive season? Mine is frustration, and it gets rough. <laughs> Paddy, when he was on the show, told me he does actually have the original frustration he used to play as a yeah. nipper, and it does get oh, rolled excellent. out to general carnage, pretty much. Um, Christmas time, um, because me and... Well, there's the kind of the usual suspects that get kind of rolled out, but we don't play, me and the kids don't play Monopoly. Nowadays, because they're old enough, if they want to play anything, it is kind of, um, well, recently it's been code names mm. that they'll probably mm -hmm. want to roll out. They have liked a bit of King of Tokyo and a bit of mm. Pandemic round about Christmas time. I have no idea why. For me, it would be uh, playing a good game of a game called Polarity with my brother. Oh, cool! Uh, okay. I I really enjoy that game. It's a weird dexterity game which is based around tokens which are filled with magnets, and you've got to feel the magnetic field hmm. and leave the token vibrating on its side in the magnetic field. Whoa. So the, the, so they're, they're leaning at a sort of like forty five thirty degree angle. You know, to you the have to see that game, it's man. it's really good fun game. I, I need fun. to buy a new copy of it because the magnets are worn out. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can get access to that game, polarity. Then oh, I really recommend. Give it, it a shot. Give it a shot and give something to Colin because that's what he would like for his Christmas. <laughs> Nick comes back in after having a break and says, "What is the top game for this holiday season?" Um. Ooh. Well, the one that everybody seems to be talking about quite a lot is Mechs and Minions, mm. which I seem to... It's interesting because I've heard people say, oh, playing it is like opening it up on Christmas Day. You know, it, is, mm -hmm. it generally kind of fills you with excitement. Um, so I would say that one. Um, I think that with size well, popularity yeah. I think that's going to see a lot of people bringing that to the table and there's going to be kind of like uncles and and stuff kind of going to be brought into that side of things so that's where we think this could be going to mm -hmm. um, Stuart Cullen um, Fury AC3 friend of the show mm -hmm. good guy we like Stu we yep. like Stu a lot he says what are you boys asking Santa for this year <laughs> And what will you get instead of that? Socks? It's socks, isn't it? 
socks. It, it, um, it might be. I'm going to put my glasses on because I can't see. As I got these quite recently. So there you go. Look at that. <gasps> oh my goodness, is that what you look like? <laughs> Your transformation to an old man is complete. I know, Doctor. <laughs> I look like Sean Locke. And what I like about this one, this question here. <laughs> oh, God, do you do? <laughs> do you see it? Do you actually see it? This is why we're not doing a photograph. Do you know what I mean? I was down the pub the other day and I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to play a ball game. Because <laughs> that's what I like. Now, I've got him um, for six letters. I've got him, um, I've got boards. Um, but, um, yeah, Stuart, I have given a list and... What I was asking Santa for this year is Armada Star Wars Armada has always been a game that I wanted to go back to and have a good play around with because I really like mm -hmm. my time playing it with Gordon. So I have asked for a couple of expansions for that. The scum and villainy mm -hmm. one that's got the, the little scum Millennium and the Falcon. Villainy, it? Yeah, it's got the little Falcon in it and it's got the slave one and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of the little rebellion fleet ships that I wouldn't mind kind of getting my hands on as well so um, is that the the no it's x-wings the the fighters and, yeah yeah and armada's, armada's the, the big the fleet, capital the big ships, fleet ships, right. yeah, yeah yeah what will i get instead of that um car mats <laughs> which i got um which you know and you've already got you've already got your christmas I've already got, yeah i'm gonna wrestling. get some others well it's my birthday on the 21st isn't it is so it? yeah so um you learn something new there you go every day but yeah but they're kind of like they're one of these things you go ah what but then you put them in your car and you go actually i really needed these <laughs> <laughs> they're practically perfect it's just brilliant so yeah my car is complete <clears throat> my car is complete and clean i can see it oh i can see it down the road um Nick comes back again because he just can't stay away and he says, would you ever do a D&D &D game over Skype with friends stroke fans of the show? I'd probably be persuaded. Yeah, I could probably be asked. Yeah, I don't see why not. It would need a little bit of organisation. Mm. Next, next question is, should I stop now? <laughs> and the answer is, yes, you should. <laughs> and then he finishes it up with another, yes. Yes. Um, Cliffy Byro, Cliff Goldsmith. Cliff Goldsmith is one of the presenters in Dark Insight, oh. which is a podcast that he does with the fantastic. Um, he does it with the fantastic uh, Jeremy Greer mm -hmm. and uh, Mr. Vader Van Oden and uh, Joshua uh, as well. And he says, "Why do I have no friends local that I could play board games with?" lol um, Cliff the answer to that mate is get yourself down to a board game club well a board game can. club a war game club you'll find people that play board games and in this day and age the amount of cafes, cafes that are springing, that up. Are springing yeah. up which yeah. are doing board games and yeah. just loiter and there's, I mean, there's even pubs now that seem to be mm, doing kind of like yeah. quite kind of board game friendly. So, well, yeah. at least here in the UK. Um, yeah. Well, um, Cliff, Cliff's, I've, in, I've heard Cliff's in London. Oh, there's a few in London. Oh, there's tons in London, yeah. mate. Do you get yourself down there's in London, There's been mate. a couple on the TV and stuff. Yeah, I can't exactly. Bring any yeah. To, to name. Yeah. No, no, but I mean, get yourself down. I mean, what you'll find is if you, if you turn up, you won't know until you turn up. And that's what I oh, did. Oh, it'd be horrendously awkward for the first couple of weeks. Yeah. Of course it was, but that was like me when I turned up with, you know, for the first time at Dwarf. You know, and the rest, as they say, is history. Um, next we have Nikki, who says, Nikki lost Panda. Nikki was on the show two shows ago, and she, um, she's fantastic, basically. Mm -hmm. She just asked, could I come on the show and talk board games? And I said, yeah, why not? We came on and she was just a good laugh and a really good person. Excellent. So she's really lovely. Um, is there a specific game you just can't seem to win no matter how many times you play? <laughs> now, you know the answer to this, right? And I'm just going to, right, before we even start here, right, fundamentally, categorically, for the third or fourth time, the fact that I continue to lose at Mysterium mm. does not mean 
It's a communal game as well. That's that's a great thing. (laughs) I don't. It doesn't mean I don't like it. I keep losing at Mysterium. You just hate it because you hate the game. Not because you lose it. I don't. That's nothing to do. (laughs) Again, going on the record as you know, with you being in front of me to say that I do not hate Mysterium. (laughs) That was just some kind of evil that was propagated from the first episode. Um, which might just be deleted. Um, I'm just thinking about that. But I like Mysterium pretty much. Um, I, I'm, and and that will become apparent within the next kind of five minutes, okay? What about you? Games that happened to me. Oh, there's a few. What game would that be? Colin is having a think. Yeah, I am having a think. There's one or two games that have angered me because I just physically can't win at them. What do you think? Life. Yeah. No, that's, <laughs> that's the game I'm going with. <laughs> I can't win at life. Um, oh, there's going to be one that you... No, you, is there games that you don't... Because you generally just, like, win. You seem to grasp mechanics like nobody's business. And then you go, yeah, I, oh, right, I'm doing this. And then I'm just <laughs> like that, what? I'm still looking at the instructions. And I'm feeling like a right proper... Muppet, basically. Um, any games? No, you just don't lose at them, do you? No, I, I, I the th- th- there's a few games. It's just uh, I never play them again, and we 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 never mention them, and it didn't happen. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> That's all good. Um, then we have the, 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 just going back. Uh, da, 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 da. Why am I singing Match of the Day? I don't know. No idea. A name we have... It's Game of Two Halves. Jumpers for Andy Pedajeki. What, or Andy at Andy Piddy, what are the top five games you've played this year and what is the most disappointing? Hmm. Good question. Interesting. Well, I'm going to answer the second part first and say the most disappointing in terms of frustration levels was probably Galaxy Defenders mm-hmm. I think Ooh. was kind of the ones that I kind of thought was potentially disappointing um, I'm also going to say Netrunner mm. but that's not kind of this year that's just for life yeah. I've always never kind of I've, 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 I guess I've not understood it enough or understood the meta but I've never particularly kind of walked away from a game of Netrunner and felt... I really enjoyed that. I really, really liked that. (laughs) I felt that I was winning. Whereas on the other flip side, card games, which I really have kind of... um, Which I would say is potentially in my top five is is Ashes, Mm -hmm. Rise of the Phoenix Born. Yeah. That game has continued to and requires I, a lot more love. I, I really, I'd really like that game. I definitely be putting Pax before Rihanna in that list because yeah. I love that game. Disappointing side of that game. Never get anyone to play Nobody it. Nobody wants to play it. <laughs> Nobody wants to get involved in the Mexican <laughs> Revolution. Um, other well, okay, I, I, okay, I've, you said top five, and it's difficult to put a top five because I could go back and say. Well, pretty much, if you pick most of the games that we've done on Get, you know, we've got to the table. The reason that we've wanted to talk about them is because there's been a little bit of love about them in the first place. And we do play quite a few games before we decide. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say, um, I know you're going to go and say something, but Mysterium is actually up there in the top five in terms of accessibility. No, it's not. It's Lies. not. It's not. Lies. I can't help it. It's six. It's maybe seven at best. <laughs> Particularly for me. I'm going to say... Um, um, Pixel Tactics number one? Pixel Tactics is definitely there. Um, I put Armada over X-Wing because I think Armada... Um, Armada requires a straight-out fight. Mm-hmm. X-Wing, you can end up chasing each other around the stars and around the asteroids and trying to, you know. Fairly disappointed, never really played X-Wing much because I got annoyed with um, they brought out ships, too many ships with turreted weapons. Yes. And I thought the whole point of X-Wing was how you moved your ships. Yes. And then all of a sudden they've, it got, didn't matter anymore. They, they've got spaceships with 360 whereas, shooting. As whereas well. Armada is... 360 shooting from the beginning yeah. but there's a shielding in there yeah. and there's the engagement rules and stuff like that mm. and 
me and Gordon, um, who played it an awful lot of times, we really, really liked it. Whitechapel has to go in there. Oh, definitely. Because f- just Whitechapel is amazing as a game. We really fell in love with oh, that. Oh, the uh, experience. Two, th- the ex- two, three games we had that, that we were game. like, wow. Oh, it was just really, really so good. If you haven't got it, then you really have to kind of grasp that and play it. Um, Catacombs, everyone is always left with big cheesy grins yes. around their face after a game. As you it. said, um, you know, I think when we played it, I think Stu loved it. He really, really liked it. And and Stu is a man of particular taste, and it mm-hmm. takes a lot to yeah. make him, you know, if it's not magic, then he's, you know, um, not the, <laughs> you know, he, but he was really, really surprised. Um, Pixel Tactics. Oh, what a game. It's what just, game. again, this is where I go back and say, Netrunner, what are you offering? <laughs> Mm. You put it down with like pixel ta- pixel tactics, and even pixel tactics over something like magic. Well, funny you, you should mention Stu because Stu absolutely detests pixel tactics because <laughs> it's got too much choice, too, yeah. too many options no, no, per but, card. Oh, it's just, <laughs> I mean, it's it's such a it's, it's a good game, and it's definitely there. Um, Dead of Winter, I'm still always loving Dead of Winter, mm-hmm. and always will. Um, I have I put one more but I'm not sure I mentioned I had put Rivet Wars but that's because I had a really really good I had a good time I I had a really really good time with that I've loved playing Rivet Wars every time I've played it yeah I had a really really good time with that I'm just thinking if there's any maybe any other kind of honourable honourable mentions that we should bring up we've done so many episodes and stuff that it's uh, yeah Um, but 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 just scrolling down through the what do we say um um yeah i liked uh, dungeon saga's not there but it kind of is there it was good fun while it was kind of uh we were kind of playing um it was always a you know it was always a good for a laugh and i really really liked it um well, that's Dice gone... Masters. Dice Masters, well, yeah, yeah, we, we've we've vastly gone over five. <laughs> well, you know, there's so many. You know, I feel that if I didn't kind of go over that, then I think that would be a bit. Um, I think that would be. The problem is, is board games are in such a golden age just now. Yes, there is so many good games compared yes. to just turkeys. You know, it's um... code names. Code names, that's another one, yeah. You know, um, Spyfall was a great game, yeah. Well. Code names is fantastic. And the other one, Hundreds I guess, of them. <laughs> and the other game that me and my son play, um, there's two other mentions, I guess. Um, Steampunk Rally, which has moved from being a Kickstarter darling to being on retail, and mm-hmm. we successfully made that jump. Um, Quartermaster. <sighs> We this is just all the we, favorite games. This that is we've pretty played, much yeah. everything we've everything played. We played. Yeah. So um, my son does also like Pokemon, mm-hmm. and I um, I can't say I don't don't blame him because that is a cracking game as well. So yes, lots and lots, lots and games. lots of games. Um, I mean, so that, I mean, so very much for the questions, guys. Really appreciate them. Um, keep them coming and. If you would like to um, have a chat with us, you know, obviously continue to ask these questions. We're always happy to have a quick chat about what we've been doing and what we've been up to. If you obviously want to keep up to date with what we are um, going to be doing in the future, then there's certain places you can find us. Um, feel free to email us. You know, you can email us on magic at we're not wizards.com or co.uk that's it there you go he remembered you can tweet us it's um we are not wizards you can find us on facebook at we are not wizards we're on instagram where we do Mm -hmm. take photographs and that is we are not wizards as well you've obviously got the website we are not wizards.com again or .co.uk um there is youtube but we're not going probably to be filming videos because we're not 
That well, it turned inclined. out paying for animators is just it's insane. <laughs> it's just My ridiculous. God. <laughs> I know, um, and we're not um, we're not making money on the Patreon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <God>. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, so, but we have yeah the YouTube channel is probably going to have to start to have recordings of previous episodes on it. Yeah, get the back, out. which will be God. kind of good. Um, as we wrap up for the year, there are going to be a couple more episodes kind of coming out, but it's I guess it's a good chance for me and Colin just to thank everybody that has stayed with us um, over the last, I guess, kind of 10 months now. Mm. We have certainly had a lot of fun and we, um, I speak for myself, I've kind of pleasantly surprised um, and it's really appreciate it. amazing what a, a community well not really a community yeah. how how welcoming people in the board game industry have been have yes. just been yeah i mean amazingly it's the just, number of, yeah just sending out an email and saying would you like to come on the show yeah. and not getting somebody and coming not, back and saying what are you talking about actually getting somebody saying yes yeah which is and, um humbled us in many ways i mean i, I didn't i think when we when i started and this friends off, we've made just, yeah. just through the podcast nick <laughs> nick hi nick but just yeah i mean it's just um thinking we were going to put jokingly at the beginning we were going to put six of these together and seeing how it went and then probably walk away True. and never mention yeah, <laughs> never mention it again and i think we're uh you know we're uh, we're we've surpassed that and we're, mm. we're we're very grateful to everybody who has ever even tweeted at us or kind of retweeted any of our stuff or said hello or dropped us emails and stuff don't shake your head we are we, we practice this oh yeah, yeah remember yeah. yeah i'm on twitter yeah yeah, yeah no you're yeah. not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> guys just you know <laughs> thanks to, to, to everybody and also thanks to all the guests that have had to come on and put up expecting Colin to be there <laughs> and, going, and going and then realising they've had to sit and talk to me for an hour and go oh for goodness sake what's going on so um, yeah I wholeheartedly apologise <laughs> but everybody knows now so don't shake your head let's finish this on a high <laughs> um, before we go I guess there is only one more thing to remember and that is that you know we are many things but we're not wizards or raccoons or, <laughs> or raccoons. <laughs> we might be raccoons i'd be a raccoon raccoon would be cool you still have fans and stuff you still got opposable thumbs that's You're all totally you into that and you know <laughs> eating out of the kind of the bucket would be expected of you i think they call it trash isn't it trash, trash. Yes, so we may be raccoons, but we're definitely <laughs> we're not. not wizards. Are we not wizards? We're not wizards. We're not wizards. You're gone. My word. Get out, wizards. Uh, <laughs> and all it says is it's a bad goodbye from me. And, and it's a goodbye from him. Colin. <laughs> goodbye. Have a really, really good holidays. Have a good break. Mm. Christmas and New Year. And uh, we shall speak to you very, very, very soon. And, and honestly, don't do meth. And yeah, don't. Do lots of raspberry <laughs> Mr. Freeze, but not so much that you give yourself like a kind of a headache type thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Bye, everyone. <laughs>